This is the Flash Forge adventure of 5M, or as I like to call it, Flash Forge's response to Bamboo Lab. It's their first real high speed 3D printer with some fantastic features such as a small form factor of 363 by 373 by 413 millimeters, a 220 millimeter cubed build size, auto bed leveling, auto Z offset, vibration compensation or input shaping, a 280 degree hot swappable nozzle, and an outstandingly low price point. Is this printer going to be your next printer? Let's talk about it. Now for the record, I purchased this printer directly from Flashforge myself. They did not send this unit to me for a review. I am definitely not popular enough of a creator for that or big enough yet. Uh, these are just my thoughts and my experiences with the printer. Unboxing this machine was very simple. All you had to do was take the printer out of the box, remove the accessories and foam inside, then unlock the bed by removing a few screws. Once powered on, the printer will run you through an initial setup and calibration, including bed leveling, vibration compensation, and a test print. The Adventure of 5M is compatible with two slices. Flash Print, which is Flash Forge's own slicing software, and Orca Slicer, which is my preferred slicer and also their recommended slicer for the 5M. Both slicers are great, with Flash Print offering Wi Fi printing and slightly faster print times than models sliced on Orca Slicer. The only real thing lacking with Flash Print is organic supports. There is one big downside with Orca Slicer, which I will touch on later in the video. The prints I've been getting off this machine are fantastic. I've had no real printing failures or issues whatsoever. I've had a few comments on previous videos asking if the 5M's print quality is as good as the Bamboo Lab Ranger printers, and in my opinion, yes it is. For some prints, I even think the 5M does a better job. I primarily print all my silk filaments now on the Adventure 5M as I continue to get better results than my X1 Carbon. If you primarily print with PLA and TPU, then this printer is definitely a good option. I've printed quite a bit of these two filaments and have had no issues whatsoever. The printer is capable of printing PLACF, PETGCF and PETG, however I couldn't get PETG to stick to the bed without upping the bed temp to 95 degrees and even then I still had some edges lifting. I've also seen some comments about ABS printing and yes I can confirm you can print ABS on this printer with an enclosure. Flashforge have just announced a DIY enclosure kit in which you print the frame for the enclosure and purchase acrylic panels and screws in a DIY kit on their website, which I will order and make a video on when it's available. Or you can simply use a cardboard box or even foam mats. These two benches on the screen are printed in ABS and ASA on the 5M with simply a towel hanging over the top of the printer, which I do not recommend at all but I wanted to test how you know, insulated it had to be to print these filaments. If you are looking at getting into 3D printing or are looking to add another printer to your collection and you primarily print PLA, TPU and PTG, then I'd highly recommend the Adventure 5M. At the price point of 499 Australian dollars, you're essentially getting the same print quality and features of the Bamboo Lab P1P, which is 420 AUD more expensive. Pretty much you're getting the features for half the price. Now there are a couple of things with this printer that I have mixed feelings on or are just not a fan of. For my machine during the calibration everything went fine until the test print which is where I had my first and my only real issue with the printer. While attempting the test print, the nozzle height was set too low and dug the nozzle straight into my build plate, damaging one side. Luckily, it's a double sided build plate and the test model was only a small cube, so I didn't really have to get a replacement. I then restarted the printer, reran the calibrations, and reprinted the test print. This time, it completed with no issues. I've also been informed by Flashforge that the new firmware updates have solved this issue, so if you purchase a new printer, you should be fine.
All five of the preloaded files are pre-sliced with a bed temp of 35 degrees. And for my printer, that was just not hot enough for the PLA to adhere to the bed properly. I have, however, recently been informed that the new Adventure 5Ms will come with a new and improved gold PEI build plate, as well as seven new preloaded files, which have bed temps ranging from 45 degrees and upwards. Good on you, Flashboard, for listening to the community and uh, making these changes. Now, I have mixed feelings on this one. When you initially set up your printer and you go through the calibration, it'll walk you through how to load your filament. However, what surprised me was when I went to change the filament, it didn't retract. Instead, it started feeding the filament through. At first, I thought I may have selected the load instead of change filament. However, on closer inspection, the change filament instructions tell you to cut the filament with the provided snippers and then purge the rest through. Now I can understand why they've done this here because if you're a beginner, it'll stop any clogging issues when unloading and changing the filaments. However, I don't like that I have to purge a significant amount of filament every time I change filament. Yes, I know I have a bamboo labex on carbon, but you're doing multicolor printing, so you sort of expect that. As I previously mentioned, the Adventure 5M is compatible with both flash print and Orca Slicer. However, currently you can't send prints to the 5M from Orca Slicer using Wi-Fi. You either have to use flash print for Wi-Fi or you have to transfer the file to a USB and plug it into the printer directly. Now for me, this isn't the biggest deal because I actually have a dedicated laptop in my 3D printing room. So I could just quickly unplug, plug it in, but it would still be a nice thing to have. And honestly, releasing a printer in 2023 that isn't compatible with Wi-Fi printing is kind of disappointing. Luckily, I have been informed by Flashforge that they are working on Wi-Fi compatibility with Orca Slicer. However, there is currently no strong ETA as the last ETA has passed. So at least we may see this in the future. All around, this is a pretty great printer at a really great price point. If you're a beginner who is looking to get into 3D printing or someone who is looking to add a new printer to their print farm, then I don't think this is a bad option at all. For the price point, you're getting a fast, reliable 3D printer that can print PLA, PTG, TPU, PLACF, PTGCF, and even some engineering filaments if you buy or print an enclosure. You're also getting an extruder head with hot swappable nozzles, which allow you to easily change from a 0.4 mil to a 0.25 mil, 0.6 mil, or a 0.8 mil nozzle by simply pressing the two red buttons on the side and pulling the nozzle out. Flashforge have definitely done a great job with this printer and I can't wait to see what they release next. Will they release a large format Core XY 3 printer or will they release their own version of an AMS? Who knows, but I'm definitely excited to see the future of Flashforge and 3D printing. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the printer in the comments down below and whether you'll be getting one. And as always, happy printing.